Hello and welcome to Bite Size MRCP, a manageable way to digest the things that you need to know for your MRCP exam. We are two junior doctors based in the UK who have passed all three parts of the MRCP within the last five years and want to help you do the same. We're not associated with any MRCP examination organizations and the materials covered are by no means an exhaustive list of what can come up in your exam and indeed are not intended to be used as medical advice. Please refer to your college of entry or your friendly supervisor for further questions regarding the exam and syllabus. If you like the sound of what you hear today and would like to join us for more bite-sized revision, give us a thumbs up and press the subscribe button. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's topic, which is on vitiligo under the section of dermatology. What is vitiligo? It's an autoimmune disease causing loss of melanocyte, which result in symmetrical depigmentations of the macules. It also, as a result of infiltration of T cells at lesion of the margins. As for its epidemiology, it can affect people of all ethnicities and the prevalence of it is about 0.5 to 1% globally. 50% of patients have positive family history and 50% of patients start having vitiligo symptoms below the age of 20. With regards to its signs and symptoms, as mentioned previously, it causes symmetrical depigmentation of the macules and it tends to affect the sun-exposed areas or sites of trauma. This is quite important because it has a name for itself, which is called Kubner phenomenon. As for its investigations, like any other dermatological diagnosis, really the diagnosis remains in the history and, and clinical examination for pattern recognition. However, in specific to vitiligo, other investigations are not usually required. However, given the fact that this is an autoimmune condition, it would be important to bear in mind and look for other possible autoimmune conditions. And if you're suspecting those, obviously testing as appropriate. Those associated autoimmune conditions um, are pernicious anemia, diabetes mellitus, alopecia areata, and thyroid disease. With regards to treatment of vitiligo, the treatment starts with conservative measures, which include camouflage and photoprotection. However, if they are not responding to treatment, then you could consider UV light therapy. And in very rare and severe cases, and certainly under the direction of a dermatologist, you could consider potent topical steroid. It has generally a, a slow progression and about uh, 10 to 20% of patients show spontaneous repigmentation. Let's do some question then. Question one, a 30-year-old gentleman presents to his GP with symmetrical hypopigmentation of the legs. He's diagnosed with vitiligo. Which of the following condition is not associated with this condition? A, hypothyroidism. B, pernicious anemia, C, asthma, D, diabetes mellitus, E, alopecia areata. If you recall from our session earlier, you would realize that uh, all of these conditions other than one of them are in fact autoimmune condition. So they could technically be seen or be associated with vitiligo, which is another autoimmune condition. The condition that's not related to vitiligo and is certainly not an autoimmune condition amongst the list given is option C, asthma. Thanks for listening to this episode of Bite Size MRCP. If you like what you heard today, give us a thumbs up and hit the like and subscribe button to make sure that you don't miss out on our next episode. Let us know in the comments which topics you would like to hear in the future. See you in the next episode.